Hello, Kumanji29 here, another Topic of the Week video. This week I'm going to be talking about the Alita Battle Angel movie, because I really liked it. This week's topic was submitted by Android89 on the Discord, and her topic is... Why Alita Battle Angel is a good movie. What about its lore, plot, cinematography, fight scenes, special effects, setting, and acting made you feel like it is a good movie worthy of a full ticket price? Did it interest you in the source material? And what do you think about Alita as a character, and why she's a good protagonist? Okay, I want to start talking about Alita as a character. Now, there have been a lot of comparisons made between her and Captain Marvel. And she's so much better. Now, Alita, obviously, is a strong female character. But unlike in other, these other strong female characters, you know, you could put a trademark by it because that's nothing more than a brand name than more than anything. Alita is an actual strong character, compared, especially compared to characters like Rey in the, you know, the Star Wars sequel movies. Alita manages to be strong. I mean, shoot, she's practically OP in the movie, but they make it so that she's not just boringly strong. In fact, it's actually really satisfying to see her kick butt. One, because the people she's going after are generally really awful, and two, because she actually does fail. She starts off the movie with amnesia. She doesn't know who she is. She doesn't know anything about herself other than the name that her, basically her surrogate father, Dr. Ito, gave her. But then she discovers a love for fighting and discovers something, something about the fighting. It starts making her remember things about her past. So then she starts to remember just a little bit about herself and learn a bit about herself throughout the movie. So instead of it just being like Rey of, she, she's strong, she don't lose, she's strong woman kind of a thing, it's more of, no, Alita is strong, but they don't even make it a point to go, oh, wow, look, she's a woman. And um, because especially with a lot of these movies, you'll see a lot of the advertising around them being, oh, wow, look, she's a woman, you have... The Star Wars movies especially f falter with this, with Rey, because in the, in the, they even do it with Phasma. Of, look, it's a woman! Look, the Force is female! Look, Phasma's our big, new female villain! Okay, and then Phasma's a what-nothing character with, what, three minutes of screen time between two movies? And Rey is a boring Mary Sue. Like, those are the characters you want to prop up? And then you have Captain Marvel, another boring Mary Sue character. And unfortunately, they heavily politicized Captain Marvel, which is the same problem that people have had with Captain Marvel in the comics. People love Carol Danvers. People loved Carol Danvers back when she was Miss Marvel. They loved it back when she had a character, when she made mistakes, she had faults. But now, she's nothing more than a feminist talking point. And a lot of people, when they go to entertainment, when they read comics, they watch movies, they play video games, whatever, a lot of them don't want to be lectured to with politics. Is it any wonder why there's backlash against Captain Marvel? No, people don't want to be told, you're a sexist if you don't like this, even if people are just, eh, about the movie. You're pushing them farther away from it by calling them bigoted names. And that's the, this, this is really the difference between Alita and someone like Captain Marvel. There are no politics in Alita. I should say no real-world politics, because apparently I have to make that distinction. Because I see a lot of times when people will try to say, well, there, there, there's always been politics in fiction. Oh, yeah, But usually, with a lot of times, what they're referring to are in-universe politics. With something like Avatar The Last Airbender, you have the whole thing with the, the Dai Li, and <clears throat> you have the um, all of the stuff going on with the Earth King government, for example. That's in-universe politics that exists within the context of the story. Then there's a difference between going, Wah! Trump! Trump is evil! And here's our Trump character, and look, Trump is evil! Yeah, you know, that, that's the stuff that generally drives people away. Because a lot of, even, even if people, like, do agree with some of the politics, you're still going to drive people away, because only a small number of people really want that. And this is one of the reasons why Alita is great as a character. Let me... Swing this back around to Alita, because that's what this topic is about. Alita doesn't have politics. Alita is a strong female character, a genuinely strong character, like the likes of Sarah Connor, 
Ellen Ripley, Xena Warrior Princess, <laughs> Buffy the Vampire Slayer. You don't need to tell people, look guys, she's a woman, because yeah, people can tell. And a lot of people really love the, these types of characters, which is why people really like Black Widow or Scarlet Witch in the MCU but don't like Captain Marvel. There's a reason why people have been begging for a Black Widow movie for years. It's, I mean, these people like these characters, but they like the characters. They don't like them just because they're women. And this is why Alita is great. She has a backstory. She has a character arc. She has faults. And even if she's strong, and they make a point to show she's strong, she still loses. At one point, her entire robot body is just, just torn to shreds, and she's, she's basically nothing but a bit of a torso and an arm. And you know what she does? She keeps fighting. She keeps fighting despite that. And when her father figure comes in to rescue her, it's, oh, he's coming in to save her. And it's not even, there's, there's no, it's not, oh, a man has to come in to save her. No, none of that. There's no politics. I mean, if you wonder why a lot of people are talking positively about Alita, apart from liking the movie, a lot of people like this because it doesn't have these politics in it. And it's something I do want to talk about with a lot of media. It's like politicizing it, forcing these politics, and then trying to demonize people for not agreeing with those politics. Bad move. You see what happens with Ghostbusters 2016. You saw what happened with Star Wars. You can see it happening with the Doom Annihilation movie. It's you, you try to force these politics in, you're driving people away. And there's a lot of people who are going to see Alita over Captain Marvel almost just for that reason. Because Alita is a good character. She has a character arc. And she wants to fight. But it's not a, oh, she's a tough female character. It's, no. She's just a female character. She has weaknesses. She cries. She gets emotional. And a big problem is that a lot of times people think that if they allow a female character to show weakness, to be beaten down, like Alita is in the movie, that's that that the word they'll be accused of being sexist, and that's a problem. Is so they don't allow these characters to go through those struggles, and Alita goes through a lot of struggles, and it's part of her character. She wants to fight. Ito doesn't want her to fight because he wants her to be safe. I mean, and it's and it makes sense because this is a man who lost his daughter. His daughter was killed. And Alita, in a lot of ways, is like, uh, is almost his chance to do it over again. To have a new daughter. And, of course, he doesn't want her to fight. He doesn't want her to get involved with mercenaries and criminals and murderers because he doesn't want anything to happen to her. But he realizes that, you know, this is unavoidable. This is who Alita is, which is why he ends up upgrading her to the Berserker body. Because, no, she needs that. She needs the power that comes with that body. And neither of them are even inherently shown as wrong or bad, because even if Ito, even though, you know, Alita does eventually get her way and get the Berserker body, you can understand why Ito is making that decision. And that's the best part about this, is that even if someone is shown to get their way, it's not a, a one person right, one person wrong. It's kind of like what I said about in the 2014 Godzilla movie. How, even though the military in that movie is making the technically wrong choices, when you have full context, you're like, well, then you can't just blow Godzilla up. But from their perspective, well, yeah, I mean, they're making the correct decision. And you can understand that. Being able to understand these characters and understand why they're doing what they're doing is important. It doesn't, it doesn't frame Alita as wrong for wanting to go out and fight and she needs to go and sit down. It doesn't frame Ito as wrong for, you know, for wanting to protect his daughter. Even if he's harsh, even if he really should have just let her have the Berserker body to begin with, you can understand where he's coming from. Because he's not inherently wrong, because he wants to protect Alita. But she doesn't need the protection. What she needed was the strength the Berserker body gave her. And even her relationship with Hugo. <clears throat> A lot of people seem to criticize that heavily, which I don't really understand, because I kind of like the, I, I like the romance. It made sense. 
Sure. Was Alita a little too trusting? Yeah, but she's kind of naive in a lot of ways. You really see that <laughs> when she goes to the bar full of all the, the warrior hunters and, you know, mercenaries, and she tries to give this rousing speech to, let's gather together and fight against the bad guys, and together we will win, and they all just laugh at her. Like, <laughs> did you think that was going to work? <laughs> and honestly, I really felt that the relationship was with her, Hugo, was actually really sweet, and... Because I did kind of worry about that, because whenever I see a romance coming in, it's just like, uh, are they going to handle it well? But one thing I really liked about it, and this is something I feel is kind of underrated, is they introduce a character. They're obviously the love interest. And then they develop the relationship. It's practically just very simple. They have scenes together. You see them growing closer. You see, oh, a bit of why, you know, they think the way they do, and why they like each other, and then they have these romantic moments. It's very simple. It's very simple stuff. This isn't ultra complicated. But I've seen so many times where you have romances just devolving into love triangles, drama. I mean, there is drama in this, no doubt. But it's not petty drama. It's drama that makes sense, and it makes sense for the characters. And I'm like, it was rather refreshing. It, it, it was actually refreshing for this. Because, holy crap, a straight-up romance? And some people were mad that Alita had a boyfriend in the movie. Can we, can we just not? <laughs> That's not a criticism. <laughs> because the romance isn't that bad. Now, talking about the actual world itself, the world of Battle Angel Alita, it's interesting because it's a post-apocalyptic cyberpunk. And, you know, a lot of these characters are partially robotic. It's one of those kinds of stories. It, in a lot of ways, it actually reminded me of Deus Ex Human Revolution, where you see in this future of a lot of people have cybernetics, even if it's even if it's just minor cybernetics. You'll have a lot of people with robotic limbs, heavily robotic bodies. I mean, it's a bit more, it's a bit more over the top in Alita because, well, it's based off of a manga, and mangas are a little stylistically different than something like you know, Deus Ex. But it still felt kind of similar to that. And I do like it, because I really love Deus Ex Human Revolution. <laughs> I liked the way they handled it, because it, it, it didn't even have to really talk about the movie, in, in the movie, is that a lot of these people are either mostly robotic or basically just brains in a robotic suit. Now, a lot of people have, like, robotic arms or robotic legs and some of them even have a lot of robotics in their bodies and it just goes on like normal but you really start thinking what makes you human i mean alita herself has a human brain in a cybernetic body i mean her body is robotic entirely but she's got the human brain and even then, she um, she asks Hugo this, because Hugo is human, like totally human. I uh, asks him, you know, does it bother you that I'm not totally human? And they don't delve into this, and I don't, I don't know if they delve into it in the manga, but, you know, I'll talk a little bit about the manga a little bit later. But it still raises questions, and it's still interesting to think, because you see some of these people who have their heads pulled off of bodies, and then you just swap it to a new body, and it's... Kind of weird. That stuff always kind of creeps me out a little, but it's like, it's interesting of, really, duh, what makes you human? Can you just be a brain in a, essentially a brain in a robotic jar? Still be human? I mean, of course you can, because Alita proves that. Alita's a very human character. And she is a brain in a jar. But it's so interesting because... I don't know. Maybe it's because they don't sit here and go on long, you know, long-winded monologues about the nature of humanity. And I've played Metal Gear Solid. I've had a few too many long-winded monologues about the nature of humanity. So maybe them being more simple was just kind of nice. The lore is interesting because you actually don't really delve too heavily into the lore. And But considering that Alita in and of itself is a long-running series, I mean, the original, you know, Battle Angel Alita series ran in the 90s. Then you've got essentially continuing stories that have been going on from 2000 to now. So 
There is still plenty of backstory to cover that the movie didn't even touch, so I expect there's more, but you learn a little bit about there was a conflict with, you know, Erm, the United Republic of Mars, and then their advanced technology, and Alita was one of their soldiers. There was a big war that just destroyed everything 300 years ago, and then you have Zalem, you know, still standing with all the advanced stuff that that has. And it's funny because I like the, the fact that they shroud Zalem in so much mystery. You see it a little bit. You don't see it too much. You get little glimpses of it, and that's kind of the point. You don't know. It, it reminded me a bit of um, in Ba Sing Se in Avatar The Last Airbender, where you've got this sort of mystery going on of there's something weird going on here, but no one really talks about it. And that's what they do with Zalem. Of they, they portray Zalem from the perspective of the characters as Zalem is this great place. It's, it's, everything's greener on the other side. It's, it's the place that you can go when there's no bad things. It's not the dirty, grimy, scrap iron city. It's not, it's not this nasty place. Everything's great, but then they're like, yeah, it might not really be. It might, because I was saying that throughout the movie. I was, I went and saw it with Andrew and I was just saying, like, okay, now Zalem, there's something skeevy going on with Zalem. This is, this isn't safe. This is... It's going to be some sort of, like, hell up there. And it kind of is, because they they have some characters get promised to get up to Zalem. And a lot of that turns out to be lies and manipulations. And sometimes you're going to get there, but you may not even be alive. And I do kind of like that. And I, I do want to see Zalem explored more. And I know, I know there's it does get explored in the manga, from what I've been told. But it's something I want to see more of. I like that mystery, and I like that they're not totally... It's like it's funny, because I like that they're not totally clear on that, because a lot of the characters don't know what Zalem is like. Very few characters, like Ito, actually know anything about Zalem. So a lot of people have this imagined paradise, this heavenly paradise that they had pictured what Zalem is, and they're, they'll do anything they get there. But then... Yeah, everything's not exactly as it seems. The fighting, oh yeah, the fight is the fights in this movie are amazing. The action is fantastic. You could watch this movie even, even ignoring the actual story. You can watch it just for the fights cuz they're great. The animation of them is fantastic and there's some really memorable fights and I definitely don't want to spoil any of those because Man, I really genuinely love these fights. The action was great. James Cameron and Robert Rodriguez did a really good job with putting together those fight scenes. And the cinematography, and I'm, I'm not really much into cinematography, so I can't really make too much deep commentary on that. But I, I do, I was always engaged, even if they were just showing stuff. The way they, the way they, the camera work was done, it wasn't the basic shot, reverse shot all the time. So I'll say it, it was pretty good to me, but I can't really make too much commentary on that. The special effects, the special effects are really good. They're actually really good, and sometimes, you know, I, sometimes I would forget some of these characters were just, you know, basically CGI walking around. I mean, Alita, you, you you always remember that because she always looks a little odd. There's always a little bit of an uncanny valley. And I want, I want to say this. I want to say this. You would think that her with the bigger eyes would be weird to look at the entire time, but for the most part, it just stopped really being a big deal when you're watching the movie. I would say not even five minutes, five, ten minutes into the movie. And, well, yeah, it doesn't really bother me anymore. It looks a little weird, but it's kind of the point. Alita's supposed to stick out. She's supposed to look a little weird because she is different from the rest of the robots and the cyborgs all around. So, because it, it's, it's funny because some of the other ones I would forget, oh, they're CGI, but then it's like with Alita, oh, well, yeah, she obviously looks different. She looks more distinct and she looks human, but just a little bit off. And I was like, yeah, you know, but that's, that's kind of the point. She's an Erm cyborg that was put together 300 years after she was scrapped. So it's like, oh, okay. 
You know, it, that makes sense. It, it does make sense. <laughs> so I, I do want to assure anyone who actually hasn't seen it, yeah, it looks weird, but it's really not that big of a deal. You just kind of end up forgetting about it for the most part because you just get used to it. It looks odd at first, but trust me, it's really, it's really not that big of a deal because I found myself just getting engrossed in the movie. The setting was interesting. Uh, I do like the fact that they, it, 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 a lot of the way the setting is kind of, uh, I don't want to say stereotypical and cliche, but some of it feels a little standard because you've got the, the ground level, the people who deal with the, the dirty stuff. And then you've got the, oh, the heavenly Zolom above them. And it's kind of, it's stuff that I've seen in a lot of sci-fi. I mean, granted, the manga was made, like, over 20 years ago. So some of the examples that I was thinking of actually came after Alita. But, yeah, I mean, but it's still an interesting setting because it's, there's, there's, I've always, for me, there's always a little something interesting about the post-apocalyptic stuff, especially when it's not like, oh, you know, everything is just crap and dirt. It, it almost reminds me, it reminds me a bit of Fallout, where you've got all this old hyper-advanced technology, and people are just sort of repurposing a lot of that and reusing it, even if they were basically bombed into the Stone Age. And 300 years after all of that, people, you have, you have people who are cybernetic doctors. You have, I mean, people having just robotics is standard. It's normal. And it is kind of interesting in that regard of, yeah, even if they were bombed back into the Stone Age, they still have, even compared to ours, really advanced technology. And I've always interested in that sort of stuff, especially when they mix a little bit of the cyberpunk into it. Where it's, it's, you know, it's the post-apocalyptic cyberpunk. And I don't know. I, I like, I like that mixture. I've always found that kind of interesting. It's one of the things I was really interested in the, um, it was one, the cyberpunk aspects is what was really interesting to me in, you know, Day of Six Human Revolution and the post-apocalyptic stuff in Fallout, but with all of the advanced technology from pre-war. That's personally just something interesting for me. Now, the acting there's some good acting in this movie. Alita's actress did a really good job. I mean, I really cared about Alita. I really cared about the way she acted and what she felt about stuff. Because she really sold that with her acting. And, and it's funny because a lot of people have said that Alita feels more human than a lot of other characters in like other you know media, in other like movies and stuff. Despite the fact that she's a cyborg. And it's because of the acting. And Christoph Waltz, I'm not really as familiar with him because I've heard he's a great actor, but he did a really good job as uh, Dyson Ito. He really sold the part. And the, the scenes he has with Alita are great. And especially the development between him and Alita as a father and daughter. It's, uh, I know, I've always, I, I've talked about this before, but I love like adoptive father-daughter relationships in fiction. And this really warmed my heart. I really loved seeing it. And he really, he really sold it. Okay, the acting in this movie is really good. I mean, for the most part, you have really solid performances. I don't remember all the names of, I don't know the, all the names of all the actors, but all of the, char the characters, all the characters did a really good job. And shoot, um, there's a character, Vector, who will at times get essentially body jacked by the man behind the man, um, Nova, and he'll like, and it's funny because it, at some point it's it's hard to tell if he's switched off, if he's switched, but then he changes his demeanor. So he did a really good job acting that out because aside from the, the, the change in the eye colors, which was an indicator that he was getting body jacked, it's like the way he would talk and the way he would act and his mannerisms did change. So I like that. And even with all the CGI, with all the characters, they still gave um, them emotions and they still they still all give good performances. But I definitely do have to say one of the highlights, highlights for me personally in the acting would be Alita and Ido. And considering that they're two of the main primary characters in the movie, that's definitely a good thing. But you've got a lot of good performances around and I honestly can't even say there was a, a performance in the movie that I thought was 
bad or stuck out to me. Everything, everything was at the very least decent. And that's good. I'm not going to harp too hard on like acting unless it's like really bad. I mean, I've done acting myself, so I know it, it, it can be hard. But yeah, the acting in the movie was generally really good. So yes, overall, the movie I felt was very worthy of going to see. And by the time you watch this, if it's still in theaters, I would recommend seeing it. I said this before on my last Alita video, but yeah, I want to go see it again because I really I enjoyed it that much. I rarely see movies in theaters multiple times. One of the only times I did that was back when the first Avengers movie came out because I really love Avengers. I still think it's the best superhero movie ever made. And I go, I want to go see Alita again, not not just because I really enjoy it, because I also really want to support it. And I want to make sure that it gets the box office revenue it deserves. I mean, the movie has good acting, a good story. I mean, sure, the pacing can feel a little weird because they cover a couple volumes. And there's a part where I do agree with some other people. Like, if they had an another 30 minutes, maybe an hour, to really kind of pace some of the stuff out, it would have been a little bit better. But... I still think it's fine. I still think it's really I still think it's really good. I like the characters. I like Alita and her story. I like the fact that Alita is a character with depth. She gets to have emotions. She gets to have weaknesses. She gets to go through hardships. She gets to earn her place. She gets she proves that yeah, you know, she deserves her place as a strong fighter and her t her tenacity even when she's down to nothing, she still fights and she doesn't give up. It's great. It makes her a really likable character. And I also didn't really talk about this, but she's also got a really likable personality. It's this weird mixture of ah, tough girl, but with a very kind of sweet and in a lot of ways naive personality. She's very kind. She sees the good in a lot of people, but she's still capable of being very fierce and very strong in that she doesn't sit by and just let injustices happen. She's She's got morals. She's she's a character that I think you can look up to. In a lot of ways, you can look up to characters like Luke Skywalker. A character who fails at times, who goes through hardships, but, but powers through it and becomes stronger because of it. And I do think a lot of people kind of write off Alita. It's like, no, please, please go see Alita. It's I, I know I'm pleading at this point. Go see Alita. It's It's good. I really liked it, and I know I can be really picky about stuff. And, and yes, um, in terms of the source material, I mentioned this in my last video too, it got me interested in going to read the manga. Now, I want to I wanna buy the manga, and I want to read all of it. And then I'm interested, if I really like that, then I want to buy the next two series. I want to I wanna read up with it. I want to keep up with Alita. I want to see what's going on. I want to see more of this world. I want to see the characters. I want to see where everything goes. And shoot, I also want to see what exactly the differences were between the movie and the manga. Because I know there are a lot of differences. And anything from some structural stuff that was things were moved around a little to make it flow better as a movie to just little details here and there that were definitely changed. You know, I want to see that. Because I've heard from a lot of fans that it's a very faithful adaptation, even with the changes that it's made. So that really makes me interested because I really like the movie. So if I really like the movie and it's very faithful, then I have a feeling I'm going to like the manga. And it, it, it makes me want to get into it. And that's good. It's, it's successful because it's not just getting people to see the movie. It's also getting people to be interested in Alita as a franchise and as a series overall. And Alita is, I mean, while I have talked to people who I found out, oh, wow, I've, I've known people who were Alita fans, it's just been a very, very obscure niche series, especially here over in the West. But seeing it get more attention and seeing more people get into it, it's like, no, this is actually really cool. I like that. I like, you know, when these obscure series get a little bit more attention like this. So, yeah, I mean, I overall really enjoyed Alita Battle Angel because... I just thought it was a good movie. And I really want to see a sequel. I really want to see James Cameron um, make the sequel to this because it got me hooked. And that's really... Yeah, I think that's uh, about it. Please go see Alita. Please. <laughs> uh, so, 
If you want to submit a topic to me, you can either comment below if you're on YouTube or if you're on Tumblr, send me an ask about topic colon, then whatever topic you want me to talk about. Or you can submit topics to me on the topic submissions channel in my Discord, which will be linked below. Just make sure to follow the rules that I'll be posting down below for topic submissions. If you want to watch last week's topic video, you can check that out here. If you want to watch next week's topic video, you can check that out here when you get that done. So what are your thoughts on Battle Angel Alita? Have you seen the movie? And if so, what are your thoughts? Please comment below. And thank you for watching.